Hi folks and welcome once again to Men of the Infinite. This is basically a follow-up video to a user's guide to relativism, which I assume you discerned as a somewhat ironic, even perhaps sarcastic peek at the logical implications of relativism itself, with particular respect to the idea of there being no absolute truths. Modern society is extraordinarily tolerant. So tolerant, in fact, that it's more than willing to put up with claims made about what is and is not real that completely contradict each other. This is never more evident than in the context of the issues of truth, knowledge and absoluteness. It's a little amusing to witness people confidently asserting that they know nothing for sure, that no one else knows anything for sure and that there are no absolutes. Now there is some confusion over what relative truth means, but it's easily enough resolved. The confusion arises over what the term relative actually means. It can mean several different things, but people tend to confuse the different meanings and end up melding all those different meanings into one sort of fuzzy lump. There are two main meanings of the word relative pertinent to this discussion. The first is that something is relative if it exists in relation to something else. Every single thing in the universe is relative in this way, as everything has a relation to that which is other than itself. The second meaning, quite distinct from the first, is when one says something is relative in the sense that it can be changed by changing its conditions. This second meaning has special application in the empirical world. What tends to happen though is that people fail to distinguish between these two different meanings. It's possible for something to be relative in the first sense and yet not be able to be changed by changing conditions, such as the case with non-empirical things such as logical truths or objects. Purely logical truths, such as A equals A or 1 plus 1 equals 2, purely definitional truths, are relative in the sense that they relate to other things, yet they are not able to be changed by changing conditions, because they contain all the conditions for their own truth. Those who feel a psychological need to destroy the very idea of absolute truth have a vested interest in failing to make the distinction between these two kinds of relative. What a load of sacred cow dung. The fact is, truth is relative. Is that fact true? If it is true, then is it only true sometimes? When is it not true? What conditions would make that fact false? If it's only sometimes true that truth is always relative, then it means that truth is sometimes absolute, which would mean that it can never be true that truth is always relative. People who hold such views about truth seem incapable of making the further step of logic that their assertions demand. The assertion that all truths are relative is one that is simply fatuous. I mean, if it's true for all of us, it ceases to be relative, doesn't it? Truth is the degree of truthfulness. To what degree is that statement true? 5%? 10%? Under what conditions would that statement be totally false? The concept of a degree of truthfulness can only have meaning if there is assumed to be an absolute and final degree of truthfulness. Therefore, the statement becomes absurd. We watch truth evolve over time. There is no static truth. And what about that assertion? Is that a static truth? If that assertion is valid, then it contradicts itself as there must be at least one truth that does not change, namely that all things change. There are no absolutes in this world or any other. What exactly is true for all men for all time? Why ask me? All you have to do is look to your own claims to get an answer to that question. Clearly, all their truths will be true only for them. None of their truths will be absolutely true. Do you see how these absolutes are necessarily generated by your view? As for my own examples of things that are true for all men at all times, none will exist and not exist at the same time. None will have a definitive origin. None will be able to conceive of a square circle. All will exist relative to what they are not. None will be the equivalent of the totality of all that is. None will arise or exist uncaused. None will occupy the same spatio-temporal location. There's just a few off the top of my head. There's also a lot of confusion and misunderstanding about the issue of absolute truths existing versus their eternal quality or truth value. It has to be one of the least understood subjects by people today, for which we can largely thank postmodernism. It's important to realise that for something to be permanently true, it doesn't have to be permanently extant. It only has to be incapable of being falsified. The link between permanent truth and permanent existence isn't really there. 1 plus 1 equals 2, for example, 
is always true, even if it's not always existing. It's always true because it can never be falsified. There can never be an instance in which 1 plus 1 equals something other than 2. Unless, of course, we change the definitions, in which case we'll no longer be talking about these same things. So even in those periods when no one is actually conceiving of 1 plus 1 equals 2, and therefore 1 plus 1 equals 2 isn't actually existing as an entity, it still isn't being falsified. Hence, 1 plus 1 equals 2 qualifies as a permanent static truth. We used to believe the world to be flat. This proves my claim that truth change is with time. Well, that's a different matter. The flatness of the Earth is an empirical question, that is to say, an assertion made about the physical world. I agree with you that we can't be certain of anything that's empirical. The Earth could well have been flat a million years ago, or the world might only have started up as some kind of simulation a couple of hundred years ago. Who knows? We can never completely rule these possibilities out, which makes our scientific and empirical knowledge inherently uncertain, despite its tremendous utility. However, logical truths such as 1 plus 1 equals 2 or A equals A are a different matter entirely. Because they're conceptual in nature and don't entirely rely on empirical evidence for their support or validity, they are utterly beyond the uncertainties of the empirical realm. It's important to be very clear in one's thinking about this issue and, and not dismiss such truths and absolutes as merely analytically trivial, as so many people do, because it's the means by which one can begin to access higher forms of knowledge. Unfortunately, most people tend to think their empirical epistemology grants them clarity of vision, but all it really does is blind them to reality itself. In our upcoming series, in which I will dissect the various classical arguments for the existence of God, you'll hopefully get a clearer picture of the importance and indeed vital nature of definitional logic and the absolute truths that it presents to us. And hopefully it will also give you an insight into the scope of application of those absolute definitional truths because we use them a hell of a lot more than you might imagine. Indeed, we rely on them a hell of a lot more than you might imagine. Anyway, till then, bye for now from Men of the Infinite, and remember that truth is valuable.